when anyone asks me about my trip to Vancouver, I can honestly hand on my heart say that it was one of the best places I have ever, ever visited. Why? Quite literally, the atmosphere. Vancouver's clean air is thanks to its really close connection to nature. There are mountains and forests surrounding the city, and the Pacific Ocean is right on the city's doorstep. Here, the great outdoors isn't just a place, it's a way of life. But it's a modern city waiting to be discovered as well. So in this guide, we're going to help you make the most of it. We're going to look at food, money, transport and a whole lot more. But first, let's get from the airport. Vancouver International Airport is less than 10 miles from the downtown area and Canada's second busiest airport after Toronto Pearson International. Getting between the airport and the city centre is relatively straightforward. A 20 minute taxi ride will cost around $45. Another way into the city is the SkyTrain. It's a bit like London's DLR with driverless carriages. You take the Canada line for half an hour or so and it costs around $7. Vancouver has an extensive public transport network, as well as being a really easy place to drive. Here's what you need to know. Now, it's not often that we can tell someone to drive a car through a major city. But in Vancouver, drive away to your heart's content. We hired a car and cannot recommend it enough. Thanks to the city's grid system, wide roads with plenty of easily understood signs, and generally well-tempered drivers, driving was an absolute doddle. There's ample parking wherever you go, even at the busy tourist hotspots, not to mention fuel is cheap and traffic generally wasn't too bad in our experience. As for public transport, you've got buses, the SkyTrain and the Sea Bus, which takes you across the harbour from Lonsdale Quay to Waterfront Station. All three share the same tickets across Vancouver's three-zone public transport network. Single tickets will vary in price depending on how many zones you travel across. However, to make things easier, just enter your destination into the ticket machine and it'll work out the zones for you. A single gives you 90 minutes of unlimited journeys from the moment you tap in. There are also 24-hour unlimited travel cards, which cost $10 and $15 if you include a journey to the airport. Navigating the city was easy thanks to Google Maps and City Mapper. My tip though, just make sure your phone's got enough data. Check with your provider before you leave. There's loads of things to see and do in Vancouver. Here are some of our favourites. Like most things in North America, Stanley Park is massive. It's absolutely huge. Think Hyde Park on steroids. It's also a great place for the locals to go and chill out, either rollerblading, cycling, or just sitting under those really big trees. It's also a place to spot some wildlife. While we were there, we saw a seal in the harbour, some black squirrels, and some bin diving raccoons, which the locals lovingly referred to as trash pandas. Dr. Sun Yat-sen's classical Chinese garden is a taste of traditional China right in North America, built as a way to promote understanding between Chinese and Western cultures. It's open all year round, and for more information, there's a link in the description. I liked Gastown a lot, and it would seem that a lot of other people did too, so expect plenty of tourists in parts. That being said, there's a great atmosphere with great places to eat, quirky shops and generally plenty of things going on, a bit like London's Covent Garden. Can't get to Banff? Well, about five miles north of downtown Vancouver lies the Capilano Suspension Bridge and a whole lot more. There are treetop walks, animal demonstrations, a cliff walk and really, really good coffee. This, by far, was one of my favourite things to do in the whole city, but it's definitely not one for those with a fear of heights. My top tip, get there early because it really does get busy. I can't go anywhere in these guides without commenting on the food. And Vancouver did not disappoint, especially at Granville Market. There's everything from sushi, which is probably the best I've had outside of Japan, organic burgers, artisanal chocolates, all sorts of baked goods, and of course, there's maple syrup plus fresh produce. And our friends at Foodie Tours recommended Lee's Honey Dip Donuts. So of course, we had to take them up on the recommendation. Yeah. Not the healthiest option I know, but why not? Okay, they're really soft already, I can tell you that much. Look at that, look. That lovely sugary goodness. It's gonna make a right mess. 
so I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make a mess. Sorry, I'm I'm doing it. Mm. That's really good. That's really fluffy. Like that's, I'm gonna need another one. Have some more petty cash. I need to go get some donuts. <laughs> mm. The currency in Canada is the Canadian dollar, which is completely different and separate to the neighboring US dollar. Now, the thing I like most about Canadian money is they've done away with the penny and rounded everything up to the nearest five cents, meaning you don't end up with pockets full of shrapnel at the end of your holiday. Now, you might hear the locals talking about a loony. Don't worry, it's not an insult. It's the nickname for the $1 coin, which has the bird on it, the common loon. Another one to listen out for is the $2 coin, the toonie. Major credit and debit cards are accepted here, though you will want to be careful for additional fees from your bank, depending on your account or card type. For what it's worth, I've been using my MasterCard credit card with no problems. It's fair to say that Canadians pride themselves on being friendly and giving a good service. So when it comes to tipping badly or not even at all, say in a restaurant, you're basically just being really insulting. A general rule of thumb is a good 10 to 15% for great service. It's also worth noting when you see the jar on the till, that's not expected in the slightest. Anyway, here's a breakdown of some of our costs during our stay. Book a few months in advance and return flights from London can be had from around £400 per person. We rented a four bedroom house in central Vancouver for £290 per night. This burger was $15.99. My amazing donut was $1. And our fancy premium car was £56 per day for three drivers. Vancouver has what you could call traditional seasons, meaning you can expect long hot summers and very, very cold winters. Being on the sea, expect coastal breezes in Vancouver all year round though it's quite reasonable to be walking around in shorts and a t-shirt through the warmer months and then layered right up through the snowy winters. If you're after skiing and snow, then obviously winter is your best bet. In the autumn, Stanley Park is beautiful. In fact, Canada is generally beautiful in the autumn, especially as the leaves start turning around October. The autumn months are the best time for hiking thanks to the cooler weather. Grouse Mountain lies north of Vancouver, which is well worth the 1,200 metre trek for the stunning view of the city. Of course, the best weather is from May to September during the spring and summer months. So that's it for our time in Vancouver. What a spectacular place it's been as well. I mean, what other major city on the planet can you expect to find forests, mountains and the Pacific Ocean right on your doorstep? We've got loads of exciting travel guides coming up, so be sure to subscribe. And if you've got anywhere you'd like us to feature, let us know in the comments.